this is actually goes by the name of tough roll-ups if you want to go out and buy 50 feet of it for the price of a used car. Uh, again, leftover from my Sports Illustrated days. Okay, putting out over that piece of frosted uh, uh, plexiglass. Uh, Got to come up here with this. Use my good old clamps like that. Okay. Now the miners' lamps that I again shot in the basement of the museum uh, were shot uh, exactly like this, but with the plexiglass. This very piece of plexiglass um, uh, raised a little higher, probably on. The, Dr. Pepper cartons turns upright. And I used one of these lamps under the, the plexiglass and got uh, uh, a near perfect round circle, very studio like. I mean, it looks, you saw the pictures, those are the unre unretouched ones. Uh, you know, it looks like a, a really studio round uh, light. Uh, the, the things that we use for this, for the most popular product is called a FOBA table, uh, which is made in Sweden and, you know, costs as much as a Volvo. And, uh, and it's just for putting lights under and behind products. Uh, but there's, there's the, um, there's the uh, mechanics lamp under the plexiglass. And there's the train right above it, or the uh, locomotive right above it. And, um, and even if you're going to use an uh, image program to, uh, to uh, cut out the background, it is going to, if you cut out the background of an uh, object that has a dark shadow under it, uh, sure, you can get rid of the shadow, but what you don't have is the light coming up from under that object. Uh, a, a, a good uh, uh, photo program uh, operator, or even a not so good one, can, can take that outline out and silhouette that and put it on a white background. But what you don't get then is the light from beneath. And this is a very good way. If you, even if you are paying or going to do it yourself in, the, in Photoshop, if you are going to take that background out or pay somebody to take the background out, by having the light beneath it, uh, you've created a little bit of illumination that's not going to get there any other way. Um, although, the guy who invented Photoshop, if he's in the audience, I know he lives in the neighborhood, uh, if he's in the audience, he will tell me that, yes, you could do it. Uh, here, I'm going to put the, um, put the back, I'm still going to use my strong backlights, even though it's against white. It's not really pure white, though. Um, and it will make a difference. Make a difference in the photograph. You probably won't see it on the screen. Um, then, actually, the lights are still set from the from the black and white. The black and white, uh, or the black background treatment of this, would really wouldn't be too much different. We'd probably do probably do really the same thing. Uh, use this use this uh, raking light. Uh, might. Uh, I'd have to bring it in a little closer, probably a little closer than I normally would. Uh, but, uh, oh, actually, there's something, by the way, here, I hadn't noticed it, but because uh, this thing has never really been out of the box uh, since Caldecott painted it for me, but <coughs> he's got glass in there. One thing I would do in photographing a locomotive is uh, always position a light to uh, to glint off the glass. The glass is there. It adds. It adds a little. Just adds a little bit of something <coughs> to, to catch. You see the light as I move it back and forth, and it just adds a touch uh, to the uh, to the picture. Uh, shooting against this white background uh, changes things just a little bit. Uh, part of it is because the camera is adjusting the exposure because it's, it's still on automatic. And uh, it's making exposure adjustment now, considering the white background too. Okay, here I'm putting a 40 watt. I've got a 40 and a 40 in front. And there we go. 
I would probably, I'd probably rather have a 40 and a 60 or maybe a 75 over here. Uh, but uh, this is not the best job I could do on this. But uh, You've got shadow there underneath. Um, would you be trying to get rid of that? Yes, I would get rid of that if I had a 25 watt bulb under here. Uh, I think that a 25 water would uh, would get rid of that shadow. Uh, uh, might might actually be able to do it with with a, with a 40, um, but if I don't mind the shadow, in real life, you know, you'd never be able to photograph that locomotive on a FOBA table. You'd never get that white background white beneath the locomotive. Um, so, you know, I don't really feel obligated to do it in a photograph of a model. One of the reasons I use a picture frame in the back is so that I could do exactly that. And we've got just enough time to show you what we're talking about. Uh, what he's saying is that we're going to do something... Uh, let's see if we can do this without... Is that kind of doing it? I can't quite... I can't see from this angle. But uh, what we're talking about is putting a... Uh, putting a light, in this case actually a trick would be to take the reflector off uh, and moving this light moving this light uh, so that it shines through one side of the uh, vellum paper. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Is that getting there? Uh, You see what we're what we're um, just taking off. And just give you an idea of uh, uh, you know many many different things you can do uh, with the light and and a background like that. Uh, move it. Well, I say center it like that. I mean if I if I put the reflector back on, centered it, uh, you might have a spotlight effect. Again, I can't quite see it, but what I'm trying to get is a is a spotlight effect uh, right behind the locomotive uh, with the corners with the corners dark. If we do that and maybe turn off turn off that light. Well, no, you don't want to do that. Look at that. That's just that 15 watt bulb, and uh, it's sure better with it on. Uh, I'd like to see that bulb just a little brighter, but uh, again. These things are to play with. I mean, uh, anyway, the only other thing else I'll say is take pictures because it's all disappearing. Yeah. <laughs>